That was a quick start. That was. It. <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday night, night live. It is and great to see all of you. Yeah, oh my gosh. Here. Welcome, um, welcome. It's been really great meeting every week on Wednesday and connecting with everybody. I've had a really good time. How about you? Oh, I've I've uh, I've been miserable because I uh, I'm learning how to cook and I'm realizing just how ridiculous I look behind the counter uh, in the kitchen. Oh, you're doing no. Great. It's been great. I've I've been doing my best. Yeah. Um and uh, and I've got the the cuts on my hand to prove it. Right. Exactly. So. Well, and this week we realized after we taped it that it was a little bit more challenging than the other weeks so we are aware of that just giving you a heads up it's easy but there's just a lot of steps involved in it so just stay calm and patient if I can do it, you can do it. And so just take exactly. your time. No need to rush. And the results are yeah. well worth it. Shepherd's oh my pie gosh. is so good. Can I just can I can we remember here for a second? Y'all, yeah. when uh, we were making these videos, right? Uh, Gabe was so impressed with the shepherd's pie. Yeah. He took it home yeah. so he could eat the rest <laughs> of it right. at home. It's just so, so good. it's it's definitely good. It's yeah. definitely it's got the Gabe Glass seal of approval. Yes, it does. So before we get started, I want to give you a heads up that you need to get out your onion and garlic if you had that in your bag. Strawberries, because we're gonna do that in this first video, a bowl and your sugar. Make sure you have a knife and oil for um, sauteing the onions and a pan and your ground beef. Those are the, all the things you need. That's quite a lot. We get a lot done in this first yeah, one, we right? Do. So hey, and, and while you're getting those things out, don't forget that we're going to be playing a game of Kahoot at the end of our time together. And so uh, maybe you've got a secondary device that you can pull up um, either Kahoot which is K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Um, that's the website, Kahoot dot right. I-T. Or you can uh, download the Kahoot app. And, and you know what we found go. out last week that you could actually just click uh, take a picture of the QR code and it takes oh, you Oh, that's right. Scan there. the QR code uh, and it'll yeah. take you right there. That shows, you know, how tech savvy we are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, enough said. We are ready to get started. So let's check out our first video. Let's do some cooking. Can you believe it's week four already? Oh my already? gosh, it's crazy, well, it's flying it's, by. Yeah, it is going really fast, but we've had a lot of fun, and I hope if you've been joining us, you've been having a lot of fun as well. But if this is your first time, I have to say, we always start by Washing our washing hands. Washing our hands. So we're going to wash our hands. That is a great yeah. idea. I haven't washed these since last time we did this. Yeah, so no, this I hope that's a... not the case. All righty. That feels good. Nice. I'm actually really excited about the very first thing we're going to do today. It's a really weird way to dry my yeah. hands. <laughs> no, it's, it's really cool. Um, we are going to start by cutting an onion. So you want to get your chef knife. And Which one is the chef knife in this one? Yeah, that one. That's the big chef knife. And I've, I've said this in the first episode, but we felt like it was a good idea, in case you haven't been with us, to um, have a little bit of knife uh, information. So if, if you notice, it, it is... Um, kind of curved and the reason for that is that it should never Ow. come up off the, come up off the cutting board you're gonna rock it but uh, in the case of an onion you you gotta obviously take it off but you're gonna cut it in half like that right mm -hmm. so you want to start with a half of an onion now I've left this particular side of it on purpose but we don't want the peel there so you're gonna peel the skin off of the onion you want me to do that? Yeah, go ahead. This, and this, yeah. Peel the skin off? Yeah, you want the, the first layer off because that part just, it doesn't taste good. That's just down to this one red part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to do um, a fancy way of actually dicing onions. This kind of work is not very appealing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the onion in half. So do I do I, I do the whole rocking like and I include the I don't feel like the, you, can, uh, you can't rock it. I probably shouldn't have started with that because But you do include that. Yeah, in you there. want a piece of the core in there. Don't watch your thumb. Don't watch wait, what? Don't watch your thumb, yeah. Okay. Just be careful. There you go. All right. So I'm gonna demonstrate on this half and then you get to do the other half. Okay. 
So <clears throat> the fast way to do this is, now you don't want to cut your fingers, so you want to keep a flat hand, right? Your fingers very firmly, and you're going to slice it almost to the core, like that. And you're going to do another layer, another layer. Are you kidding me? So you have three layers. One, two, three. See that? Okay. Okay. Then you're going to almost follow, there's like kind of natural lines within the onion. You follow it, right? Okay. Get that out of the way. And then you're going to do, do, do. Wow. And actually, this is where the rocking comes in handy there. Gotcha. So you've got nice diced onions. You think you can do that? No, but I'm going to try. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so you do this first. Yeah, you gotta just be careful of your fingers. You're gonna go, yeah. This way? I usually do like three, and you don't go all the way to the core. You, you go, the core is... Do I start in the bottom or the yeah, top? Yeah, the bottom. The core is what keeps it together. So you want the core for this portion this of it. This is scary! Yeah. Careful. You want to oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm, I feel like the knife's gonna slip. Yeah. Okay. And then very carefully the. And now down. No, you no. want to you want to follow. Oh, that's along. right. That's right. So you only did two, but that's okay. It'll work with two. It'll work with two. And then like follow the line. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Actually, yeah. So you can start a little higher up. And you're just gonna. Oh, you go all the way through. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 There you Oops. go. All right, so that's good. You've got four. Okay. And then you're gonna, yeah. Now do this? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> this is. Yeah. Good. Look! There that's awesome. Go. There you go. There you go. Wow. Yeah, what, about, what about onion. that? Well, the piece of the core is in there, but you don't need that part. Right. So, okay. So we're going to put a little bit of um, olive oil into the pan, and we're going to start sauteing the onions. And while you're doing that and turning the oven, I don't know, I would put the stove top on to like seven, and then um, preset the oven to 375. Okay. Where did you, you, where's the uh, olive oil cover? Olive oil's back here. So um, I'd say a tablespoon of olive oil, but you can eyeball it. All right. You think you can eyeball um, a, a tablespoon, tablespoon of olive oil? Yeah. Nice. Okay. You're going right. to add the onions and get those sauteing. And because the pan right now is cold, um, you have a minute to work Just with the garlic. Yes. All of them? Yeah. In there? Mm -hmm. This is really starting to move me. Yeah. Oh, I know. This is very touching. <laughs> Okay, onions in the olive oil. Yeah. So you brought up a very important point. So a lot of times onions cause you to, your eyes to water, and that is because they're made in such, it's actually a way that they, um, it's like a survival mode. They smell so that animals won't dig them up and use them. I mean, it's actually a survival thing. So um, if it's really bothering you, you can just rinse it off. And that'll help get rid of the uh, smell, yeah. Okay. So that happens if the onion is really strong. Okay, I'm going to just dry it with this here. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to add garlic. Now, this doesn't go in with the onions because garlic has this, uh, it burns really easily. So we're going to do this right as the ground beef is finishing up. But this is a fresh head of garlic, and the way you separate it, an easy way to separate it, is you put the, the top of it down, and you kind of put your body into it and press on it. So the, and they'll separate. Okay. You put your palm, yeah, and then you press. Yep, there you go, there you go. And it separates them so that you can take one mm. clove. Let's do two cloves. Okay, mm. so a lot of times, a recipe will call for uh, peeled garlic, and you can see how the peel is there. And a really super easy way to peel a piece of garlic, especially if you're going to be mincing it, is by just 
pounding it like this. And so then the skin comes off and it already gets a piece of it. It already kind of gives it a head right. start. So now you're just, this is where the knife skill comes in where you don't want to take it off the edge. And because you can't really hold onto the items, you're just going to rock it like that. So, and then you're, you want to dice it. So you're going to just kind of keep going through it. Like keep going? Yeah. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. How much, yeah. how far do you well, want You're going to gonna dice it. So you want them relatively small and evenly spaced together. But um, yeah, look at that. You're dicing garlic. This is so exciting. Nice. All right. So we're going to push that to the side because we don't need it quite yet. And um, we do need onions later on in the episode. So uh, we're going to cut up some onions, an another thing of onions. This is called scallions. So we'll cut those up right now. And these are scallions. And these are a very mild onion. And you a lot of times can put them in a salad. So I, they come with a rubber band on it like this, and I think that that is really handy. I usually just leave the rubber band on, and um, I cut off the bottoms like this, and get rid of those. Good job. Get it sauteed up there. There's like one really big one. That's, That's okay. You know, all right. It'll, it'll saute and get soft. So this is where your knife skills come in handy. So remember how we were using our knuckles as a guide? If you have your fingers like that, um, what happens is they're, it's easier to accidentally you know, get them in the way of the knife, which you don't want. So you use your knuckles as a way to guide the blade of your knife. And the knife never comes off, mm -hmm. and you just kind of rock it. Professional chefs can go really super fast. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is being slow and careful and doing nice little even chops. Yeah, like that. Catch your thumb. There you go. Oh, looks like keep lifting it up. Yeah. Perfect. How am I doing? Yeah, you good. One last, one last chop. Now, a lot of people like to put the green parts of the scallion in, which you can do that, but we're just going to stop there because we only have a couple of salads that we're making. And we're also going to do one more thing before we add the ground beef. Check on those onions and see what you think. How are they doing? They look like onions. Yeah. Are they browning up? Kind of. Yeah. I don't know how. You want them to be translucent, so you want to make sure that they're soft. If they don't get soft in this portion of it, they'll have the tendency to remain crunchy later on in the dish, which in this case isn't really a good thing. I like a crunchy onion sometimes, though. Well, but not in shepherd's pie. You want it to uh, be soft true. and part of the dish, not okay. a, a, a side to the dish. Okay, so we're going to push this aside because it actually has the taste of onions on it, and we are now going to do what we call macerate the strawberries. We're going to what? We're going to macerate the strawberries. And it's just a fancy term. That sounds term. like really intense. It's a fancy term for getting the, the strawberries, um, the green stem off, and cutting them into bite-sized pieces, and then adding some sugar uh, to them so that they get all combined with that sweet flavor. It's pretty mm. easy to do. So um, I'm going to give you a bowl. And you want um, a paring knife, which is the smallest knife you have there. Let me push this off to the side. Yeah. Um, in your thing. Smallest knife? No, not that. That's steak knife. There you that go. That one? Yep, that's it. Okay. And so um, you're going to cut the green part off like that. And you want them bite-sized pieces. So it's really up to you um, how you slice it, if you will. Oh, um, I forgot to say, these have been rinsed uh, ahead of time. So we'll, um, yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> just strawberries first, because you don't want the taste of the dirt. Even though they're washed and prepared for the container, they still have a little bit of dirt on them. So go ahead and continue cutting All right, the let's green eviscerate yeah. these strawberries. Macerate, macerate Masquerade the strawberries. I don't think I'm doing this the way I'm supposed to do this. Let me see. Am I? 
I mean, if you want, you can use the cutting board. It just, it still has onion flavor on it, so. No, no, I'm, you're making me nervous. Okay, so, all right, here we go. I, I, do you, no, I, I, I was gonna show you. I want okay. to eviscerate these myself. Macerate, Macer macerate. Macerate yeah. these myself. Good. All right, so. How did you do that, though? You went like this? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. But then you've got them in like smaller. How did you do that? That's good. Can you eat them? Watch your fingers. That's making me so yeah, nervous. Oh my goodness. Ah. No, wait. Oh, wait. Okay. What's that? Yeah. Another one? So yeah. We do mm. the whole pack. But while we're doing that, we can probably so add the ground beef too. Because we need to keep we need to finish these strawberries and then brown the ground beef. Okay. And we can add the beef. I think the onions are done and ready. I feel like there is no way to cut strawberries safely. Well, I just wait, don't feel no, like... stop. Oh my gosh, that just, no, please. Okay. Okay, okay. here we are. I feel like you're doing that on purpose just to make me nervous. <laughs> All right, let's... This should not be in there. No, that's all right. Okay, so add, some of the, add the garlic to the onions. Can, okay. you, can you scoop it up maybe on your knife a little bit? It's okay if you get those other ones. Like scoop it. Yeah. Okay. I'll scoop show you. it up on my knife. Yeah. So you're gonna do this, like that. Okay. And then you're gonna add it and and finish on. You know, they don't they they burn really easily. So you you want to add them kind of at the last minute before you add the ground beef. Okay. Okay. Stir it around. Yes. I did you know. lower the heat? I did. I, I, I actually lowered it to seven, and it's up to you how you know hot you want it. Um, oh my gosh, you can totally smell the garlic. Yeah. Did it just take yeah. over? That's oh cool. Oh my gosh. It, it cooks really quickly, so you don't <laughs> you don't need too much longer to so saute good. the garlic. Oh my Otherwise, gosh. it gets burned, and if you have burned garlic, it doesn't doesn't really taste good. So you really do want to wait until the last minute. Wow. Okay. This is going to be so good. So go ahead and add the ground beef and get it nice and chopped up. Just throw it all in there? Yep. All righty. You're going to break it up with a spoon there so it's made into nice little pieces. Woo! Why do they call it shepherd's pie? Um, because back in the day when they came up with this idea, it was um, shepherds, actually I don't even know if this is true, but this is what I was told. Um, Just say it with when, confidence and we'll when, the <laughs> when shepherds were going out into the field, they needed a simple way to sustain themselves while they were out taking care of the sheep. And so they would combine like the leftover food, like their leftover meat, and potatoes into one dish, and so they they called it shepherd's pie. But I think nowadays right. it's not usually made with leftovers; it's made with fresh ingredients, so it's it's not really authentic. And I have to say, it's usually made with lamb. Oh, really? Which now that I'm thinking about, that's kind of weird. They were going out to take care of their sheep, and it was made with lamb. I don't know. That is weird. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up. Anyway. All right, so um, while that's browning, I want to show you one more thing with the strawberries here, Jim, and then we're going to take a break because we have some uh, really cool uh, thing next to share with you. So, okay. Um, okay, so the, the meat is browning. We've got the strawberries macerating, um, except that we have to add the sweetness to this. And the beauty about um, strawberry shortcake is there's so many ways to make it. I as a kid, used to have it on a biscuit. Um, but hmm. you can make it with angel food cake, and it's actually a low calorie um, dessert. And you can make it with Splenda. It still tastes really good that way. I know people that actually put the strawberries into a blender and blend it up, so it's like a nice pureed thing. But we're hmm. gonna make it with sugar. And you can put up to a cup of sugar in here, but we're only gonna do a half a cup of sugar, because I still think it's, it's really good. So I have sugar here. Uh, oh, that's flour. Um, half a cup of sugar. I forgot to pull it out, but I will give it. Add a half a cup of sugar. I thought it was flour. Oh. Okay. All right. And then we're going to add it directly to the strawberries. Okay. Okay. There we go. 
Half a cup? Yep, half a cup. Yep, perfect. And then I would say two tablespoons of water. If you have two strawberries of containers, you can do like a quarter cup of water. Um, doesn't, it just needs to get a little bit of juice. It's not a, hi here, that's too. Oh. Okay. Do you not have a tablespoon? I don't know. That's a spoon. That's just a spoon. All right, we're gonna. All right, and then you want to stir this up with with a, with a different spoon, not the same spoon as you. Okay, yeah. Get it all mixed in. That's how you macerate Ooh. something. Isn't that cool? It's getting all coated in the sugar. And we're gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it chill while we're finishing the meal and our segment. So, wow. like I said, we have something coming up that will keep you occupied while you are browning. Have the fun macerating mm. your strawberries. Yes. <laughs> You're too much. You're too we were much. we were eviscerating strawberries <laughs> oh, or whatever it is. Eviscerating. That I I had never done that before, and I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. We were in staff meeting, yes, and we were talking about whether we had done that or not. And everyone in staff meeting is looking at me like I'm crazy. They're like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but macerating basically is just it means softening the item that you're kind of adding the sugar and stuff too. So I think there's a be. theological thing to be said that yeah. the sweetness is what softens our hearts, well, not the struggles and the challenges we face. That's, that's actually very good. Um, like we said, as we got started, what? You're looking at me funny. Just, uh, anyway, as we got started, we realized that there were a lot of steps. And so basically what should be happening now is you're, you should be finishing up your ground beef. If you're done with that, you can move it off the, the stovetop for a second or two because when we go back into the next video, we're going to add some more things to it. Um, your strawberries, once you've added the sugar and stirred it all up, you can pop that in the refrigerator and let it... Um, kind of macerate. all macerate together. <laughs> and then um, set your oven to 375. We didn't say that in the beginning, but we are going to be popping the shepherd's pie into the oven when it's done. And if you're looking in your bag for green onions, oh, yeah, we the, did scallions. the scallions. We did not get scallions this week. Yeah, I forgot. Ooh. But Sorry. you can use the uh, the rest of your onion. It's not, it's not really the end of the world because it's for the salad, so you may not even want it. Um, as we get ready to go into the next segment, you're going to need the Worcestershire sauce, um, the frozen veggies, the pan, mashed potatoes, bowl, milk, butter, salt. And then we're going to make the wedge salad, which means you'll need your lettuce and your veggies, bacon bits, if you picked up blue cheese, you can get that out, and uh, carrots, all that stuff. We're gonna. We got a lot yeah, on this next lot, portion. But just really, basically, the rest of your bag, except for the whipped yeah. cream, which is, and the cakes. Yeah. Those are more those cutting. Things. Yeah. More applying. More macerating. What a glorious night we yes. have in front of us. But you, um, you were saying you've learned a lot. Is there something that stands out to you? What well, you here's what stands out to me. It's what I didn't learn. And okay. I think it's clear in the video that cutting strawberries can be a challenging yeah. thing. And, and what makes it challenging is, uh, you know, you could just cut them on the cutting board. Yeah. But I was trying to do what you were doing. You, you somehow or another cut the strawberries while doing 15 other things by hand, like yeah. in your hands. That is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, and it's funny. I never really thought about it. You were saying, how do you do that? And I guess I don't even know. I have to go back. I'll, I'll tell you how that. you did it. What? You, you've done it by practicing and oh. committing yourself to yeah. it. And this past Sunday, we talked about being enslaved to Christ and yeah. how that means we're constantly moving towards perfection, right? Yeah. And so maybe I didn't get it quite right when we made this video, mm -hmm. right? But if I keep working at it and I keep taking the steps, hopefully... I'll be able to learn at yeah. some point. And you know what else I was thinking about too? Like really, you can you don't have to hold them in your hands like that. You can just cut them on the cutting board. Yeah, but it looks so cool when it you were doing it that cool, way. But here's the thing, what I was gonna say is, you know, kind of along the lines of what you were saying, when we are um, learning to be disciples of Christ, sometimes you have to start in, you know, kind of a basic way and then you graduate to more <laughs> I graduate some more deep things. <laughs> I 
sorry. Throw it down, Miss Chatfield. <laughs> well, Throw anyway, it down. we have a lot to do in this next video. Like I said, basically everything in your bag should be out except the, the pie shells or the cakes and the whipped cream. And we are ready to get to segment two. So let's check it out. So well, what we got to do is get back to focusing and we're going to season up the shepherd's pie here. And one of the magic ingredients is Worcestershire sauce. Um, so we're going to add two tablespoons uh, of Worcestershire, uh, Worcestershire sauce. sauce. Say that three times fast. Worcestershire sauce. Here, I got a measuring spoon here. Two tablespoons. Nice, nice. Um, okay, that's good, that's yeah. good. All right. So your eyeball is a little bit different than my eyeball is, but I, I don't think it ruined it. I still think I it's love really good. Yeah, sauce. but it is what adds flavor to the dish. It just brings depth to it. Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a half a cup of beef broth, and in the case of a vegetarian option, oh it's gonna be vegetable broth. And we're going to put a teaspoon of Italian seasoning in, and um, you could eyeball this, but I don't trust your eyeballing, so Probably I'm gonna give good, you a, a teaspoon thing. of, you got it? Yeah. All right, and I love this kind of pepper. Last time I was here recording this, we were using the, you know, the table pepper, but this is just to me much more exciting. So you're going to um, add some salt and pepper to taste. And that uh, direction always uh, makes me laugh because how do you know if you're gonna like it or not unless you taste it? And of course it's on a hot stove. But I would say average um, a teaspoon of salt will be to what everybody generally likes their seasoning to be. And then, um, do you know how this works? I'm afraid, you know how? Well, we're gonna find twist out. Twist it, twist the bottom and you You'll be okay. like a fancy chef when you, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Get it all nice and peppered up. I'm enjoying this. I'm a yeah. fun guy. You are a fun guy. <laughs> You're fun and likable, Jen. Awesome. There's a lot to like about this process. And then, last but not least, we're going to add the bag of vegetables. Now, um, in this bag, you have lima beans, and I don't, Lime, like lima beans, but uh, I just like the variety. There's more variety in this pack than just the regular three corn peas and um, beans. So I just pick the lima beans out. So if you don't like lima beans, pick them out. If you don't like peas, you can pick them out. Um, but it just makes it look pretty. So you're gonna add a majority of this bag to your meat. I would say half the bag. Just pour it right in? Yeah, just pour it right in. And it's okay if they're frozen because you're gonna add it to the baking dish and it'll, it'll heat up when you're baking it in the oven. Man, this looks awesome. Yeah, it does look good. We're cooking shepherd's pie. Yes, okay, so we're almost done. Um, Can't tell a lie. Nope, we're gonna spray our pan. I don't have a good eye. And now you're gonna, you're done. So you're gonna take that and you're gonna pour that in here. So these don't have to be thawed out or Not cooked. at all. They can be right out of the freezer into your pan or they can be thawed, it doesn't matter. You're gonna just dump it in. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> nice, look at you go. Good. And even it out, even it out. There we go. All right, I'll take the pan. All right, so the, the finishing touch of the pie requires mashed potatoes, so we gotta get that going. And honestly, some people actually make real mashed potatoes and it's really delicious with homemade mashed potatoes, but if you're coming home from work, uh, I think instant mashed potatoes work just as well. In fact, sometimes I almost like it better. So um, first of all, we're gonna do this in the microwave. Um, you need, we're gonna do the eight serving, eight serving um, portion here. So we're gonna make it in here. Oh yeah, okay, good. Is that what you need? Yeah, no, that's good, perfect, yes. So we need milk and we need water, and we need butter and we need salt. So you get the milk out. Okay. And we need uh, two and a half 
That's a little extra sweet too. So you'll just follow, if you're using the instant mashed potatoes, you will follow the um, directions on the back. Two and two thirds, right? Yep. So that goes in here? Yep. And you're going to mix the water and the milk together and you're going to microwave it until it's hot. Two and three quarters of milk? Well, I think it's two and two and two thirds. Yeah, so we only got two cups of water in there. Mm -hmm. right, two two and two thirds. Of the milk? Mm-hmm. No, that was water. It was? Yeah. Oh. One and a third cup of milk. Um, I just put two cups in I know, in here, give it. Oh gosh, what do we do? Let's see if you're right on the money. Oh my oh, gosh, so you are so I'm close. close. All right, that's enough. We'll just add it right in. And that was impressive. And two, two thirds of the water. So it's two and two thirds cups of water, one and a third cup of milk, and four tablespoons of butter. So we're gonna put the butter right in there. Just cut up. Oh, did you know this about butter? It's got the measurements on it. And so you can just follow one, two, three. Did you know that? I did. What? Okay. So cut off four tablespoons of butter and plop it right in there. Have you ever made um, instant mashed potatoes before? Uh, no. No? Oh, okay. I get this thing that you like can microwave or whatever. Oh, yeah. That's really like, good, too. They're like, Actually, that, they you could use that, but I don't know if you've ever found this with those mashed potatoes, but they, they're kind of, they're almost solid at first. You really have to stir them up. And I think what's nice about this is you can get the right consistency so that it's spreadable. So we're gonna do a teaspoon of salt in there too, because that's what it calls for. And then we're gonna put it in the microwave, just like that for- Just like this? Yeah. Cover it? No, no. And you want it to be boiling. So I'd say four minutes. Four minutes? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna move this out of the way. Oh man, okay. And so while that's going, we are going to make um, the wedge salad. And this is where um, I feel like this just makes it seem fancy. It's like a super easy way to make a salad, but it's fun and it feels like you've done something special. Wouldn't you say? I already did. Have you ever had? Yeah, that's true. This you, you in the table makes it all worthwhile. So, all right, we're gonna bring, because we're gonna use these and we're actually gonna make all of the toppings that we're gonna put on top. So we have a tomato. And I actually... You say tomato, I say tomato. Okay, well, it's whatever. It's still part of the salad. So uh, we're going to dice the tomato, and um, I'll just show you how to do it. And again, I'm not sure, but um, we're going to do it the same way we did the onion. Okay. And... So I have I two. This. I got this. Yeah. I got this. All right, I don't know. I feel like... I'm feeling confident here. Okay. I'm Watch feeling confident here. Yeah. I get this. Nice. Tomatoes are a little bit harder to do because they're a softer um, vegetable, but it's it's a it's a great way to dice tomatoes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't like tomatoes, you don't have to use the tomato on your salad. But I think it brings color to the salad, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I like it. Okay, perfect. Okay. We'll get rid of that. We don't need to do the other side because we're only going to make. Yeah. I'm rolling this. You're rolling it? Yeah, it's called rolling the dice. No. Oh. Okay. Oh my God. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bye. Okay. So then uh, we have a cucumber, right? And we're going to. Um, this, there's not really a special way to dice a cucumber. Mm -hmm. So um, usually I just cut a chunk off and then I cut it and then dice it. So you want to you try that? Sure. So, what, so this thing again? No. Mm -mm. I mean, I guess you could do it that way, but just cut it up. I just, yeah, we're I just, just do it. We're gonna okay. sprinkle it. I wanted to do some sort of fancy cut work again, yeah, but yeah. it is fun. Once you learn how to use a knife, it is something that you can, you feel excited to do. So these. These things have sat in my kitchen for years, and now I'm excited to know that that's what those things are there for. What, knives? Yeah, this You're, is You don't use knives in no, your kitchen? I'm joking, I'm I joking. Know. Okay. All right, so these are the components of our salad, um, along with, now if you're a vegetarian, of course, you're not gonna add the bacon, and you probably won't add the cheese, but um, you can have everything else. So, do you, um, Ooh, we're good. making a wedge salad. Okay. Because we wedge 
the lettuce. Right? Okay. And you buy just the regular head of um, iceberg lettuce. It has a core on the bottom. And there are different uh, approaches to actually coring it, but I, I'm afraid if we do that, uh, it'll mess up the fact that we're gonna wedge it. So we're just gonna, in this case, cut the core off. Um, so there's a little bit of the core there, mm -hmm. which is gonna keep the wedge in place. And you're gonna wedge it. You're gonna cut it down, and then down. See how it's wedged? You got a nice little wedge. That's the wedge. Ooh. Yeah, right? And then uh, it's kind of like your own little salad bar, right? Yeah, so, um, fun. You, you sprinkle a little bit of the tomatoes. Like on top? Yeah, and a little bit of the cucumbers. My tomato. Do you like tomatoes? Yeah. Uh, me too. Not everybody likes tomatoes. I used to grow them out feel in like my backyard. not looking the way it's supposed to? It's OK. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right, and some of the onions. Oh, the onions too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It looks good. It looks good. All right, Mine so looks more like now uh, what I'm wondering a mistake. Is maybe. I want to get some tomato why? on top of there. There okay. we are. All right. So then we'll put a little bit of, of the dressing on. Oops. Got a little carried away. Maybe we should redo this. This one. No we way. Want we want it to this look looks good. looks good. Right. So, and then, do you like bacon bits? I love bacon, bacon bits. bits. Do you like blue cheese? Uh, no. But that's okay. I'm going to put some on. So that's the other thing. It actually traditionally is made with blue cheese, but I put ranch and then blue cheese crumbles. And that way, if you have a family that some of you like blue cheese and some of you don't, you can make everybody happy. And what so kind of dressing is it? It's a ranch dressing. And I got... Ken's light dressing, so even though the bacon bits probably aren't light. What do you think? I think it looks awesome. So actually, it does look good. Yeah. So that's your wedge salad. So uh, the potatoes are done. So we're going to. And if you run out of space on your table for all this food, you can yeah. just find a way to wedge this in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> So pull out the, the milk and add the... Still kind of liquidy, is that... Yeah, it's good. That, it's right. perfect. Yeah. It so we didn't add the potatoes. Well, we're going to use that pan. Do you think you're going to spill it onto the pan? Probably. Probably. Okay, so we'll that. All right. And so we want to add the potatoes now. The whole box? No, there's a measurement on the back. Oh. <laughs> How many? Um, for the eight. For the eight? Yeah. Uh, two and a two-third two right? two -third cups. Okay. So you add it. So that's one cup, right? Yeah, just add it in. Don't stir it. One. Two. Yeah. And then yeah. oh. two-thirds. Did I just add potato to our web salad? Yeah, you did. It's okay, though. Sorry. This is almost the whole box. Well, it's not always the case. Depends on the size of box you buy. So stir it. Stir it up. Oh, yeah, I will absolutely spill this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's thickening up. Yeah, that's what happened. What the heck? It's so I've nice never made and... potatoes like this. No way. I can't I believe you've never made instant wow. potatoes before. These Isn't are so cool? much more fluffier I know. than, uh, they're, they're than good. like, you I'm just addicted to ma I box mashed potatoes, wow. even though they're not as good as regular homemade potatoes. I but try I think some of that this. what's great about this is what are you doing? Well, you want to try it. Oh, my God. Different spoon. That is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Is it good? Yeah. All right. So this is the fun They're part. Totally like you potatoes. get to frost the shepherd's pie filling with mashed potatoes. Does that make sense to you? Sure. Okay. So we're going to put the mashed potatoes over the top of the shepherd's pie. Okay. Just pour it in there? Well, yeah. I mean, you could do that or spoon it on, you know, and then you're just going to make sure that yeah look at you you're making shepherd's pie this is amazing this poor lamb no it's not it wasn't lamb oh that's true okay oh my gosh <laughs> that's yeah. crazy Jim, this is like a this is show. like yeah look at you yeah spread it oh decorate it nice 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 that is awesome 
Okay, good. Oops, oh. I messed up a little yeah. part there. So. I, you know what? Here's the thing. Everybody wants food to be perfect. They want it to look perfect, but it's going to taste just as good the way you've done it. You know, kind of like spilling over the sides. Um, now, here's the other thing. Where'd the butter go? Oh. Where'd the butter go that we have? Uh, uh, right there. Okay. Yes. All right. How did I do so this? So now we're going to, this is about ready to go into the oven, but you want to dot it with slices of butter. It looks so good. Yeah, perfect. And the reason for this is flavor and it helps it brown up. My grandmother used to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And do you like paprika? Uh, yeah. Okay. My gosh. I know. I didn't realize I made that much of that. You can eat it if you want. Is that where you were going to go with that it? That is where my head was going. All right. So then we dot it with that paprika. Dot it with the paprika? Or no, I meant uh, sprinkle some on the top. Not a lot, but sprinkle. Paprika is nice flavoring. All right, now before we pop this in the oven, Ooh. we're going to do the roasted carrots, which is super easy. Super easy. That's ready to go. The oven is preset to 375. That's correct. correct. Yes, 375. All right, so we take the bag of carrots. What are we making right now? Roasted carrots. Oh, all right. Open them and pour them onto the pan. Actually, can you give me a paper towel, please? Yeah. I just want to like be able to move this a little bit. I don't want to mess up the oven. <laughs> That's true. Okay. So just pour them on here? Yep, pour them on. And then you're going to put about a tablespoon of oil on. Okay. And you're going to add salt and pepper. I would say a teaspoon of salt, and you want to get the pepper out there. Did I pull it over? And then this pepper? Yeah. No. No? Where's my pepper? I don't know. All right. Well, yeah, you can use it. So we're going to sprinkle it on. Go ahead, sprinkle the pepper on. Mm. Okay. And then you're going to use your hands and make sure everything's coated. So this is a point for if somebody likes to get their hands dirty and messy, they're yes. going to be the one Here that volunteers is. for this, right? Here it is, yeah. I just love this part. I love to use this. You just like the sound. <laughs> I do. Come on. That's all part of cooking, right? Here we go. Okay, go. I'm going in. Yes. Here it comes. Ooh. Carrots with salt and pepper. Yeah. And all right. Into the oven. That's it. Yeah. Do you want to wash your hands real quick? That's all. Uh, that's all. That yeah, we do. put you the shepherd's pie and the carrots in, and it is good to go. All right. Well, we're putting it in the oven. And Hope you are too. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> There was a lot going on there. Yes. A lot happened. In fact, if you're still trying to catch up, it's all good. The carrots really are just roasted, and you just simply add the oil. No idea. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Like that blew my mind. I think it was. Other things. Okay. Well, you know, it's <laughs> added honey <laughs> bag, and you can have carrots. That so would have been if so you a little creative, you can add the, you know, you How much honey would you two tablespoons of it for the bag that you got, That's but it's awesome. so good. And they just get caramelized. They kind of round out the richness, I think, of the shepherd's pot. Yeah, oh, it was so good. And uh, um, it's been fun uh, watching it, it back. Aaron I brought up a good point in the last video that we as a church should be incredibly grateful for how good Julie does at working with children. Like it's, uh, <laughs> I think that's a really totally good point. Totally true, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what it is. I'm just like having to persevere through all the answers. That's right. That's so. right. Well, you have, um, you've worked with a theologian, <laughs> right? That's right. I did actually, before I jump into that, just um, uh, this, as things are cooking in the oven, might be a good time at the table, right? Oh, yeah. 
a candle, some placemats, yep. and uh, maybe that's something that the kids can do. Uh, you know, getting the table all set up and ready for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, I know you, you've said that the candles are something that just kind of takes the meal up yep. a notch, right? Yeah. And so <coughs> this might be a good time to kind of get yeah. that stuff. And, and as ready. you're ra ra wrapping up the shepherd's pie too, both the carrots and the shepherd's pie should go into the oven when you're done. They're both should be in there. So they, those should be in the oven at this point. Yeah, right? or at, at heading that direction. Right, but they both, right. when you're done with them, Put at them this in point, the in the oven they go. That's awesome. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got a chance. This was such a great week too because. Uh, um, I, ha I got a chance to, to connect with one of my clergy friends, Anil Singh, who has been, we, we, we literally have been on this pastoral journey together. Mm -hmm. We started at the same time, so we're, we're both like 10 years into this thing, um, and uh, he's, he's serving down in South Florida currently, but uh, we, uh, we, you know, we talk regularly, and then we, we get together for, um, when we have annual conference, nice. um, we, we always do annual conference together, and uh, he's He's just a, a just a great guy. He's from New York City, which we'll talk a little bit about. But he's just uh, he's got a great um, a great take on what we're what we're talking about this past Sunday with being enslaved to Christ, and uh, that was a difficult subject for yeah. us to tackle. I feel I like on Sunday, <clears throat> but I like what Anil has to say, and so why don't we uh, hear what he has to say about? All right. It? Last Sunday, we looked at chapter six of Romans, and Paul uses this word slave, or really enslaved to Christ, and he, and he uses it with confidence. And um, that's a pretty controversial part of the book. And so I was just curious what you thought about that word and how you understood Paul using that word. Right. Well, as a 21st century reader of the Bible, I'm, I'm actually very uncomfortable with the word slave, at least as I read it in English. 